Hi guys and welcome to all of my September pickups for the year of 2020. Okay, so I pretty much started this month with um, a question to my buddy Reggie. Uh, as everyone knows, uh, I like playing PS2, but the problem you get with PS2 is the picture quality is dog shite. Image clarity from the PS2 is absolutely dreadful. So I contacted my buddy Reggie and I looked online. I was actually looking to get one of those HDMI converters for about 140 quid. But I was just kind of like, can I really justify 140 quid just for a better bloody quality image? So as I said, speaking to buddy Reggie, and Reggie was like, PS3, get yourself an original PS3, backwards compatible one. I was thinking that's pretty much a good idea. And from a local Facebook pickup, I picked up this monstrous, massive, which cost an absolute fortune to make. Sony made lots of money in each one of these sold. Yeah, this is um, the backwards compatible PS3. It's a huge much of a beast. It will be replacing my slim PS3. PS3 PS3 going to storage as my main console of use now. Um, the guy I bought this from was pretty local. It worked out I paid after um, selling off the games. I was paid fifty pounds for it, so I was really happy with that. Came with a pad, uh, all the cables, all the leads, and an eighteen-month CEX warranty. So that's even cooler because he'd not long uh, he'd not long bought it and he just wasn't playing it anymore. Um, it had the hard drive upgraded to a terabyte. That's right, isn't it? Yeah, and um, yeah. So it took a while to transfer everything over, and. Um, First thing, of course, you notice is what a jet engine and what a weird smell these give off when they're on. It's a, just a warm, I don't know, smell. But it's an absolutely lovely machine. It all works perfectly apart from the touch. When I touch it to turn it on, it works fine. Touch it to turn it off, it doesn't work. So I have to use a pad for that. But no issues, if it comes in issue later on, I can just take it to CEX and get them sorted out. But yeah, first thing I did, I was boot up a few PS2 games and oh my god, the difference truly is night and day. It's absolutely stunning. Um, it's pretty much like just below PS3 standards, the quality you get from one of these. And I was just really, really chuffed, really happy. And I've gone back to playing some of my PS2 games and enjoying them instead of going, uh, uh, why am I behind a wire mesh? Uh, but this, yeah, so yeah, I put the old smooth in on and uh, expanded the image a little bit, and it's just stunning. If you're going to play PS2 games, my advice is to get one of these. And these ain't very expensive these days. I mean, there was one local to me that was missing the flap no pad that was 30 quid, but it was working perfectly. But I obviously went wrong with the flap and the pad and a bigger hard drive, so I was chuffed with that. So yeah, 60 gigabyte PS3. And um, from my buddy Mark Jowett, I managed to get five more Sega Saturn magazines I needed. And um, some are not in the best condition, but they're all the insides are perfect, you know, they're all readable. Um, I don't think any of you would do demo discs. Um, a favourite one is the old King of Fighters 95. When I first saw that, I was like, oh my god, I have to get that, I have to get that. Because that was one of the games that originally got me into, like, say, the Neo Geo. Because as I, when I actually first met Tony, years and years ago, it was kind of like we met a round of friends and we played Neo Geo. And as I was getting into Neo Geo, everyone knew him was obviously Neo Tony. And at the time when I was in the Saturn and I saw that was coming, I was like, oh my hell, I have to get that, I have to get that. And I did. And so, yeah, big thank you to um, Mr. Mark Jarrett for those, for those five Sega Saturn mags. Only about 16 left to go. And everyone knows the biggest story in September was Super Mario 3D World coming out on the Switch. And I was so, yeah, I pretty much definitely wanted to get myself that. And I, but I waited a while, everyone was going, oh, it's going to be worth millions of discontinuing it next year. Because the main reason I wanted to play it was, uh, obviously all, all three games, but I've always wanted to go through Mario 64, because I do not get on well with Nintendo controllers. I don't like GameCube controller, don't like the N64 controller, although I admit it's the best analog going, and I just don't like the Waggle Waggle Wii controller. Um, yeah, the, so I want to play um, Mario 64. Now, I watched a video of it online. Kind of, yeah, I will be getting it. I'll definitely get that. I mean, it's not sold out everywhere, and it's not going to be crazy expensive, because there's just copies everywhere you go. I'll probably get it in Christmas sales or something like that. But I was, after watching a video online, I saw that Super Mario 64 on it was pretty much a one-for-one one copy, not much different. But there is another version that has loads of new content. And that was Super Mario 64 DS. Now, whilst I'm not really much of a handheld player, I absolutely, you know, saw how much difference, how much content they've added to this. 
So I was kind of like, yeah, me need to get that, me need to start playing this. And I have actually been playing me a Game Boy, even though I'm not, not much of a handheld player, game player. I mean, that thing there will sit in its dock and stay in its dock. But yeah, even this month I've been playing um, Sonic Rush and on the game, on the, t I got myself 2DS. And to be honest, I didn't really enjoy it. It's, it's the actual game itself, I just didn't find it much fun. But this, I really want to give a go. On the local groups for £6, picked up Super Mario Bros. 2. And um, I know it's really good, and I know £6 is a really good price for it. Other than that, I know not much about it. It's a cool yellow case. No, like, in its on manual. I don't even know if this one came with in its on manual. But they obviously bought from CX to CX sticker. But I know this one's all about collecting gold. So aim for 1 million coins. So I shall give that a go. I think it's just a Mario fever catching up with everyone. And I did have this game, uh, the next one, a long time ago. But I um, sold it on when I was going to sell my DS collection. And I suddenly sold this, decided not to sell it. And so I saw this and I wanted to get it back better than the crazy eBay prices of £35. And that is Ultimate NES Remix. As you can see, I paid £18 from CEX. In, well, £18, £18 in store credit, where if you buy your store credit online, you can get it for 75% cheaper. So, no, 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 you get it for 75% of the value, especially for Facebook groups. And I really freaking enjoy this. It's a, it's a cool mix on the old games. They've just all mixed them together and remixed them. And the Donkey Kong was my favourite. I was actually playing this on my um, Wii U, and I really enjoyed it on the Wii U. And I wanted to get it on the DS. And eighteen pounds was a good price, so I got it. When I picked up this, it came with a massive bunch of PS3, PS2, and PS1 games, through which I've sold one. I mean, they're not really worth much, but one I did keep. I was quite surprised that I didn't actually own it. Well, it's been a pretty tit tatty shitty copy, but it is Metal Gear Solid 4. And um, upside down, played the right way. And yeah, everyone, anyone that knows me knows my favourite game this console generation is Metal Gear Solid 5. And I absolutely love the game. This game, you play a little bit, you do cutscenes, you play a little bit more. And I really, I really did enjoy this game. I didn't give it much time though. I did spend, um, they did one playthrough. And then if I remember correctly, I went online and downloaded a save and put onto my PS3 and got all my, um, yeah, everything unlocked and did it that way, which, cheating, I know, but I wanted to enjoy it quicker. And, uh, yeah, so this, basically this came with the machine. So it did sell on, like, all the other games that came with the machine before the price down. Um, what else did I get? I got an Xbox, uh, sorry, a Dreamcast on my way to Monday, perhaps finishing the Dreamcast stuff I want, the collection. I got the Dreamcast Planetary Microphone Set. So I put up an ad. I've had an ad going online for a while for anyone that after the Dreamcast games, anyone selling the Dreamcast games that I've got on the that I've got on my want list. And yeah, so pay twenty pounds for this with five pounds postage, and it's all pretty much brand spanking new inside. You can see where the box has been in storage. But um, yeah, I don't even know if the game works. It might do with broadband. It's just basically like a mini game, but uh, they've got Dream Arena up and running, and you come to the microphone. And the game case is actually still sealed like new. And um, what should we do next to Local pickup. These were £2 each or two for three quid. And unlike most people on the planet, I absolutely love the Kinect. And so I purchased Star Wars and the Kinect Sports Ultimate set. Now this one I got because I actually have two of the Star Wars consoles but it's missing the game. And so um, I got this to basically bundle it with that. I mean, it looks like £1.50, so I can't complain. And I love this game. I mean, the Kinect, you needed to um, recalibrate it so often when playing it, but when you got it working, which wasn't as often with this game, it was brilliant. But I did absolutely love the um, Dance Central kind of like part they had in it, where, you know, like, it's Han Solo, it's Han Solo, and stuff like that. They all had like a Star Wars spin on the famous songs. And, it's worth a go for a laugh, and my actual daughter, I know, she, she unlocks everything even on the hardest settings. And uh, yeah, something that my unfit ass probably won't be able to do these days. And the other one is Connect Sports. Now, I freaking love these games. Uh, absolutely fun. I even enjoyed the um, Xbox One version, but yeah, that's crazy expensive these days. I will um, get around to setting my Connect up and uh, playing it. I do have two of the Connect consoles, two Star Wars consoles, and two white Connects. And um, yeah, I mean, my first experience with the Kinect when it came out, I think the most fun I ever had with it. I played through Fable the Journey, this is the Xbox 360 Kinect, Kinect sorry. And I, gave, and I did um, Sega's As It Rise of Nightmares, I got 
I got about two thirds of the way through it before I got stuck in a cupboard and I couldn't figure it out. And I just, even though I was recalibrating, I was just done with it. I just, well, patience was running low, and so I stopped playing it. But um, my most fun memory is one night is me and my buddy Adrian, who you've seen on the No Tina Crumpets channel a few times, we started playing Connect Adventures one night, and we said, ah, give it a quick bash, we'll give it a quick bash. And something sort of like took over us, where we became so competitive, where for like two to three hours straight we was jumping, ducking and all that, and the next day, I mean it was the most fun we ever had, it worked, it was flawless, we were surprised by how good the calibrate, we didn't have to calibrate once, it was just spot on. But the next day when I popped round to see him, I could barely walk. We were like, oh, how are you today? He was like, oh, why did you keep going? I was like, I kept going to keep up with you. He said, but I kept going to keep up with you. <laughs> so, yeah, it was fun and we paid for it. But yeah, see, the Connect does have fun. Uh, if you're willing to spend some time, you can get a lot of fun out of the case. It's never going to be what people want it to be. I mean, that's magic. But it's a portion of it. I mean, there are some games where it just doesn't work and it gets stuck. But just calibrate and persevere. Don't be too impatient with it. I mean, it is a new technology. I mean, the Xbox One Connect is much better. It's a shame that the, the Xbox One Connect doesn't work the same way the 360 one does. That would be cool if it did. Um, the game collection was doing an offer, and I wanted to get this. Um, I might get it a while ago, uh, and it's like a uh, 15 pound to see it. But they're doing this for five pound ninety five. This is probably the only Red Faction game that I've never played. Um, the last one I played is the one where we completed it, you got the um, unicorn where you can shoot rainbows out of its arse. Uh, Red Faction Armageddon, I think this is. A really cheesy way they called this one the remasters one. But I'm super looking forward to this, and it's like six quid from the game collection, so I'm chuffed with that. Another game that's been on my to get list since I bloody sold it a long, long time ago. Um, but I literally started playing this, and I really started getting into it. For some reason, I stopped playing it. I think probably work or something else took over. And that is Obscure. Yes, it's Silent Hill stroke Resident Evil in like a university. And um, I had the second one on the PS2. And I was going to buy this on the PS2, but I thought, no. Because everyone knows that if you've got a choice of PS2 or PS or PS2 or Xbox, get the Xbox version because they're always the better version. And even now I can make the PS2 games look a lot better thanks to this machine. Um, yeah. And my last pickup, my final pickup, this bloody thing has been on my eBay watch list for years and it always sells for like more than I'm willing to pay. I, I know they're not great games on this, but I managed to pick this up for £11 including postage. It's the Xevious 3D G Plus collection, blah 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 blah. Okay, so I'm probably quite indifferent to a lot of my friends where. I'm sorry, but I just find the Xevious games really freaking boring. Um, don't mind playing them, but they're so dull. They're something like you'd play on a Sunday afternoon and try and force yourself to stay awake. Um, but no, uh, but the reason I did want this was for the Xevious 3D game. And, I mean, you get Xevious, you get Super Xevious, and you get Xevious Remix, or whatever it's called, which basically is a combination of one and two, one and super put together. But the uh, exclusive one to this Xevious 3D G Plus is fucking brilliant. What a difference. Um, I mean, it's even got motions where it goes into like Galaxy Force at the back. I mean, that doesn't stay that way for very long because then it goes back to being like a top down view. But I was actually playing this and I was excited and I'm really going to pump some more hours into this on the lovely PS3. And yeah, but as I say, the, the, the three other Xeviuses on there, they'll never get played. I did play them all and I was like, yeah, that's the same. Oh, that's the same, but different. Oh, that's the same, in a different place. But Xevious, I was like, yeah, I am freaking enjoying this. But this hits about 30 to 35 on eBay and CEX is roughly the same. I didn't ever want to play that because I just know how dull the Xevious games was. But for that one game alone, it was most definitely worth getting. I just wish they would release like a compilation pack on like the Xbox One or PS4 or the new consoles or something. Um, but I do love my shooters, and it's pretty cool that we've got like, loads of more cave shooters and that coming on the way, and Death, uh, Death Smiles 1 and 2 are coming to like next gen, or current gen, you know, Xbox One and not the series and PS4 or Stroke 5, but they're coming either way, and so their compilations are where we're getting, which is really cool because a lot of them only came out in 360, look them up, they're worth a look. But anyway, this has been my September 2020 pickups. Um, thank you guys for watching, take care of yourself, and I'll speak to you all later.